Okay, here's another improper integral. Uh, this time with uh, this time we're integrating uh, from negative infinity to two. So I've graphed um, I've graphed the function one over four plus x squared in, in Desmos. Uh, so we could again think about this uh, in terms of area. Um, so in this case, let's see, we're trying to integrate from from negative infinity to two over here. So we're looking at um, it's a different color. I'm not sure. Uh, we're looking at the area under the curve going from from two, let's say, back towards negative infinity, going this way. So again, it's an unbounded region. So again, if you picture, um, suppose we investigate uh, the value of this improper integral by creating a table uh, where we find the area under the curve somehow. Uh, let's assume that we could do that. Uh, Uh, from negative infinity to two, well, okay, so we can't exactly do that. Here's two over here. Um, so what we do is we set up a left-hand boundary. Okay, let's call it T. Uh, and we find, let's suppose, we, found, we find the area under the curve uh, from T to two. And, and we do that a bunch of times with t approaching negative infinity. So we take, find the area under the curve from, let's say, negative 1,000 to 2. And then from uh, negative 2,000 to 2, negative 3,000 to 2. And we see if uh, it looks like that area is approaching any finite value, or is it just increasing without bound. Um, so we'd find the area from t to 2 as, uh, as t approaches negative infinity. Um, and so that's the way we're going to express it uh, up here, is um, the integral, instead of negative infinity, we want to make it a bounded region. So we're going to say the integral from, it's so hard, to, it's because I'm using my finger and not the tab, uh, the stylus. Okay, from t to 2 with t approaching negative infinity. Okay, and the integrand stays the same, 1 over 4 plus x squared dx. Okay, this is going to take a, oops, the integral from t to 2, put the upper limit of integration. Uh, this is going to take a little more space than that last problem, so I'm going to get a clean page here. Okay, I'll rewrite. Uh, actually, uh, let me start from the beginning. So the, oh, dang it from negative infinity to 2 of 1 over 4 plus x squared can be written as the limit as t approaches negative infinity of the integral from t to 2 of 1 over 4 plus x squared. Okay, so next order of business is to uh, find the, find the uh, antiderivative. Of this integrand here. Uh, the limit comes at the very end. So we start with, okay, what's the antiderivative of 1 over 4 plus x squared? You may recall, I'll write it down, but this, uh, here you could use one of your formulas from chapter 5. Uh, it's the fact that the integral, integrals of the form 1 over a squared plus u squared, oops, that says a squared, sorry about that, uh, du, is equal to 1 over a arctangent of u over a. Um, this integral right here has that form where a is 2 and u is equal to x. So okay. um, that step where we left off is equal to the limit as t approaches negative infinity of, okay, we can go ahead and write the antiderivative. So it's 1 over a, which in this case is 1 half, arc tangent, which is inverse tangent, tangent of u, which is x, over a, which is 2. Okay. As uh, x goes from t to 2. Um, okay, so that 1 half there, I would bump that out in front of the limit. I like to just bump those constants, uh, constant multiples outside. 
And then we've got uh, the limit as t approaches negative infinity of, so now we substitute 2 for x and see of the ta inverse tangent of 2 over 2, which is inverse tangent of 1, uh, minus, in, remember the 1 half we bumped outside, so I'm skipping that, uh, inverse tangent of t over 2. Oops, inverse tangent of t over 2. Uh, now, inverse tangent of 1. Remember, with that, you work backwards. Um, you want the value between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. That was our restricted range for inverse tangent. Um, the value of, let's say, theta, for which tangent of theta is equal to 1. So when is the value of tangent 1 between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2? And the answer is pi over 4. Um, so this, let me get one different color, it's so hard to change colors, okay. This right here is equal to pi over 4. Um, so t, and let me take the bigger picture here. So with that limit, when you take the limit of a constant like this pi over 4, which is equal to this, um, the limit doesn't do anything. The limit of a constant is just equal to that constant. So I'm not going to write limit as t approaches negative infinity in front of that pi over 4. Oops, I'm just going to write pi over 4 there. Uh, okay, oops, here we go. And now minus, so that expression of t over there, that this limit does have an effect. So the limit as t approaches negative infinity of inverse tangent, whoa, inverse tangent of t over 2. Just, I have to apologize one more time for my handwriting here. It's, it's, I'm working on a tablet, but without a, a stylus. Okay, I'm going to need a new page for this. I kind of hate to do it, though. Yes, we need it. Okay. New page. Let me summarize where we left off. So we have one half. Inverse tangent of one was pi over four. And we're working on the limit as t approaches negative infinity of inverse tangent yikes, of t over 2. OK, this is where we left off. Uh, now, inverse tangent. Uh, you might remember the graph. I don't know. Um, I'm going to draw it here. Visualizing the graph helps with evaluating this limit here. So if you remember that with inverse functions, x and y reverse roles, and if you also remember that, so that primary branch of the, of the tangent function, y equals tangent of x, the one that goes through the origin, um, has vertical asymptotes at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. So those vertical asymptotes at x equals pi over 2 and x equals negative pi over 2 become y equals pi over 2, y equals negative pi over 2, uh, which are horizontal asymptotes here and here. And it goes through the origin. It's, it just looks like a tangent, that primary tangent branch knocked on its side like this. So the limit as t approaches negative infinity. Well, as t approaches negative infinity here, you divide it by 2. That whole argument is approaching negative infinity. Um, and negative infinity would be over here with respect to this inverse tangent graph. This is the graph of y equals inverse tangent of x. Oh, man. Okay, hopefully you know what I mean there. Um, and so this limit, as, as t approaches negative infinity, inverse tangent of t over 2 is approaching negative, negative pi over 2. This right here is equal to negative pi over 2. Let me copy the rest of this down. So everything we have outside of that is the 1 half here, pi over 4 minus, and then there's your limit, negative pi over 2. Okay, so now we just have to crunch the numbers. So this is 1 half pi over 4 plus pi over 2. If you get a common denominator inside the brackets there, that's 1 pi over 4 plus, within the second fraction, you'd have to do top and bottom times 2. 
oops, that's times two. So this is two pi over four. So you combine it and that's three pi over four. I'm sighing at my own handwriting here. Uh, multiply straight across and this is three pi over eight. So since we got a finite number here, we would say that the improper integral, this is worth writing on its, on its own page here, the improper integral from negative infinity to two of one over four plus x squared converges to three pi over eight. Um, it's acceptable to just write equals three pi over eight. Uh, but when we write that, what we mean is that that improper integral converges. Um, and just one other uh, perspective on that. So that means that this un area of the unbounded region, I'm trying to go back to where I had that graph. Yes. If we created that table, it looks like that table would have values that were actually approaching um, the value 3 pi over 8. End this video on that image right there.